just open up the eyes uh, in in uh, making a perfect uh, angiogram. Uh, let us start with a uh, history like uh, uh, Mr. X, uh, 60 years old, diabetic pleasant gentleman admitted in my hospital for elective PCI to LED. He has been treated uh, for his unstable angina in another hospital. The diagnostic angiogram shows critical lesion in LED and was planned for PCI to LED. This is my normal practice actually to do all outside angiogram for repeat angiogram before doing uh, uh, proceeding for the angioplasty. So part of that, I did the angiogram. You will see that this is the angiogram that I saw in my chamber. You are, what you are seeing, there is a non-critical lesion in the proximal uh, mid LED and there is a slow uh, feeling of the distal PDA. Uh, it could be something ear embolism or something like that. It's not or maybe in block or thrombus, whatever it is. This is like this. In other view, uh, you can see the, the LED proximal is the eccentric haziness. Uh, but here the PDA is well visualized. So probably that C angiogram was because of some embolism of the ear that at leads to complete cutoff of distal PDA. But this view, it shows a little bit of uh, eccentric leg whiteness. I did a repeat angiogram uh, uh, by giving, a, uh, this was the angiogram. Actually, I'm not seeing anything here. Proximal LED is perfect. Mid LED is also perfect. There is nothing in the PDA. So actually, what I have seen in this angiogram in my chamber, you see the catheter is really that initiate the spasm or uh, some form of air embolism leads to this sort of scenario. Uh, then I asked the patient that you don't need anything, the medicine will be enough. But there is two Two more things here uh, have to think about. The patient came all the way from the Cox's Bazaar with his two relatives selling his land to prepare, borrow some money to do the angioplasties. Although he was very happy that he don't need anything, but he may not get that land back. So the Moral of this thing is that if that angiogram Sir, has been can done I perfectly. You? Uh, sure. Can I interrupt you? Sure. They are saying they are not able to see the slides. Screen is blank. Screen is blank. Yeah. One, the guy, uh, Parakarki from Kathmandu has written the screen uh, is blank. Are you, are, you, are you seeing? Are you seeing? I'll have to check. Parak, uh, I'll have to call him and say he has written, he cannot see. Uh, here, we yeah. are seeing it quite well. Uh, the, the movie you are seeing? I'm seeing. So maybe there's something wrong here. We what are do you think? It quite okay. If, if, uh, what do you think it is? Uh, number one is the coronary angiogram, as you know, but it is the luminogram. It is not truly uh, angiogram, it is an arteriogram. Uh, uh, you can. It is not arteriogram. It's a luminogram. You are seeing the lumen. There are other modalities like intravascular ultrasound, and um, that actually uh, give uh, information about the length of the disease, percentage stenosis, black burden, then virtual histology, calcification, and sometimes in stent expansion and uh, stent position. It can help. There is another uh, modality is called fractional flow reserve. It is sometimes we use to see the physiological significance of the lesion, which is in the gray zone, like some say 60%, some say 70%. So these are the patient who will be much benefited with this uh, uh, physiological uh, um, um, significance of the uh, blockage by what we call fractional flow reserve. Another is the OCT, which is similar of intravascular ultrasound. And finally, the angioscope. Direct visualization is mostly theoretical and also in, uh, I have not done, I have not seen even. 
So a little bit about the anatomy uh, for those, I know is a recapitulation of your previous knowledge in the second year and also part one and so on. The coronary circulation, actually we see the epicardial coronary arteries. Mm -hmm. That is the art branch of the ascending aorta. It runs perpendicularly, penetrated in the myocardium. Slowly, it will gradually reduce its size to become arterial, capillary, venule, vein, and then in the coronary sinus, ultimately right atrium. There are the two branches mainly, right coronary artery originates from the right coronary sinus, passing along the right border up to the cracks where it divides into PDA and PLV. And other branches are coronal branch and marginal branch, acute marginal branch. Similarly, the left coronary artery originates from the left aortic sinus, divided into LAD and LCX. LAD has got diagonal and septal branch. Septal branch are it's perpendicularly penetrate the myocardium. Diagonal is a diagonally placed. Some of them are two to four in number. And circumflex has got obtuse marginal branch, and also two to four in number. Sometimes the PDA arise from the left circumflex. Then we call this uh, left dominant system. Uh, if you go back to the history, actually, the selective angiogram, it was an accidental outcome of uh, non-selective uh, root autography done in <coughs> They were trying to visualize the coronary artery in a patient with valvular heart disease before surgery. But accidentally, the catheter entered the right coronary artery, as you've seen on the uh, right side. This was the, that, that angiogram first detected as a selective angiogram. From there, then uh, uh, Judkins and others make a pre-shaped catheter selective for the right coronary and also for the left coronary. So history is like that. It was an accidental outcome of a non-selective angiogram. Now come to the angiogram. What it is, it's the X-ray image of blood vessel after they are filled with contrast material. It's the gold standard to evaluate the coronary artery diseases and usually identify the exact location, severity of coronary arteries. What do we usually see? We look for the origin, its branch, its distribution, and also to identify the exact location, extent, and severity of the disease or stenosis. We also assess the TME flow and also need to view the retrograde supply by the collaterals in a totally occluded contralateral vessel. This is important Hello. from a therapeutic point of view because diagnosis, not all you need. You also need to guide the therapeutic intervention. So nowadays, a lot of CTO patients we are getting. It. If you don't see the retrograde collateral, we cannot plan what to do for that. And also assess the intra or extra luminal calcification. Now, what are the indications? So commonly, as it is a coronary artery, so coronary artery disease like in the form of arsenal angina, non-STMI, STMI. Sometimes the patient resuscitated after cardiac, after cardiac arrest, different types of cardiomyopathy to rule out coronary artery disease. And sometimes chest pain evaluation in undetermined cases in high risk population. Sometimes it has been done in a patient with congenital heart disease or in the valvular heart disease. Say for example, if a children have got tetralogy fellow, and if we don't do angiogram, and if we don't guide the surgeon about the right coronary artery or circumflex artery, its location, and if it crosses the RVOT, where the surgeon may need to augment that RVOT by patch augmentation, and accidentally may cut the coronary artery. That is the reason we do some congenital heart disease angiogram to guide the surgeon. Same with the valvular heart disease before valve replacement, especially in male above 45 and female above 55. And common access, although nowadays it is the radial is the major. We, uh, it was done by brick brachial, then it But difficult in iliofemoral diseases, and there's a complication is much high. Contrary to that, the radial recently it was switched 
switched most of the intervention is most of the cardiologists now switch to radial because it is early mobilization less complication and is the patient comfort now what are the angiogram uh, the step like preparation of the patient the vascular access intubation of the coronary ostium dye injection cine filming and seal the punctures and one by one i am going to talk about what is the preparation of the patient preparation of the patient is very important the reason is this it is not that all the may Like yeah, consider this angiogram 20 years back it was very difficult to convince the people for the angiogram because angiogram is not simple thing it has got its own risk it has got the mortality what about the percentage so people who are scared about the angiogram and many patient that time don't do procedure here in bangladesh they used to go nearby country where they get confidence and we need especially the new generation cardiologists need to give more emphasis on the counseling because you need to convince the patient need to get confidence of the patient initially the people who used to go to nearby country but now the the patient are coming to dhaka but not all cardiologists will practice in dhaka some are practicing outside so outside dhaka so you need to counsel the patient at least spend 10 15 minutes with the patient about the procedure how it has been done how much blood is needed how much uh, uh, painful it is what is the step of the procedure you can show it through a youtube animation of the procedure to get confidence of the patient so that is most important is the counseling next thing is that it should take that informed consent of the patient after counseling you should explain everything and patient will be convinced and they will give a consent yes i am ready to do this procedure next you should check some uh, blood test coagulation profile renal function before starting the procedure you also examine the patient to look for the peripheral pulses also to see the drug what he is getting and also check the vitals like pulse blood pressure and spo2 you don't need to check yourself you will ask your sister to do this job there should be a clinic shaving at the subpunctures side patient usually being fasting for at least 4 hours because some dye sometimes causes vomiting and, and that may lead to aspiration to avoid these things you uh, need to be uh, uh, saying the patient about the fasting some patient are uh, a little bit anxious so they may need uh, some uh, tranquilizer next step is the puncture site uh, now uh, as i said uh, the puncture site commonly the radial but you also should know the femoral uh, in in this connection i want to uh, say one story like said 15 years back 20 years back uh, our general surgeon do gallstone gallstone operation by opening the abdomen but after coming the uh, the laparoscopic surgery who only uh, know how to do laparoscopic cholecystectomy and at least 5 to 10% of the patient may need to open the abdomen laparoscopy was not possible then what they did they make a stand by surgeon in the ot to help them to in a bail out situation uh, in in angiogram even uh, not ask some other and femoral intervention to be in cath lab to bail him out that's the reason you need to know both femoral and radial puncture femoral puncture usually it is done uh, between the intrapigastic artery and profunda over the head of the femur usually at the junction of medial one third and lateral two third this is the uh, scenogram and if you show this is the procedure alcohol injection you just take a 20 or uh, 18 goes uh, cannula straight way puncture the anterior wall once the lumen the, the cannula is in the uh, vessel there will be jet of the blood and remove the cannula you see there is a jet of blood means the free flow of blood then introduce the short wire you should keep your uh, left arm on the groin side don't remove it then 
make a small rent then introduce the uh, introducing sheet over the wire so once it enter into the artery then you remove your left arm so that will reduce the chances of hematoma at the puncture site uh, as similarly you can do it with the guidance of fluoroscopy this the head of the femur you see the lateral one third and medial two third there is a free flow of blood and if you push the wire it will go on the opposite side means that it is in the aorta similarly the radial artery here you need to puncture both wall so what you do the maximum pulsation about 2 cm uh, proximal to the distal end they remove the trocar you will see the trick of blood is in the cannula then as you have crossed the put it wall so and in and if i have arrangement and you see here the patient is sitting in the uh, the uh, extra chest is very important because this is the normal x ray with normal aortic arch here you can take 3.5 for left and right is enough you don't need a second uh, carp catheter 3.5 is enough but sometimes this is a, a 3.5 catheter just pre shape all you need to just push it it will enter in the ostium of the left coronary you see i have not manipulated anything just remove the wire push the guiding cath uh, diagnostic catheter it will sit in the coronary artery but sometime the same way take a different view with the uh, uh, left or right catheter sometime the aorta is dilated is because of dilated ascending aorta especially in elderly people with vascularity changes aneurysm of the ascending aorta here you may not cannulate uh, coaxially with the catheter what you have taken early with a 3.5 or sometime here is the unfolded aorta means that open up aorta here also the same 3.5 catheter may not fit nicely with the coronary so for example on the left side this is the dilated aorta you see the catheter was not coaxially placed it is hitting at the lateral wall of the ostium but if you take a four guiding catheter gl4 it will fit coaxially so it has got an advantage of that if there is anything in the ostium you can easily avoid unnecessary dissection of the thoracoscleric plate and the ostium so just to avoid these things too much manipulation you should take the right catheter for this sort of patient with the dilated aorta sometime the location of the coronary artery may not be in, in a place where actually usual say for example this is the situation the coronary artery the left coronary artery it appears to originate a little bit high up you are not seeing the circumflex so here if you take 3.5 it will also not fit so here what you will do it you will need a one size smaller catheter like three card that will fit nicely coaxially and if you see on the caudal view it nicely coaxially placed similarly sometime the coronary artery may arise a uh, left coronary artery may arise separately circumflex and led and a separate origin in that case yes you can do uh, with a single catheter by little manipulation of clockwise rotation to led and anti clockwise rotation to circumflex or in other way take 3.5 for led and take 4 for the circumflex so in this way you can make coaxial of the guide diagnostic catheter to the ostium of the left main sometime the right coronary common uh, anomalous origin it arises from the left coronary sinus so here the jutkins uh, right will not cannulate the coronary artery because it has arise from the left so in this case you need a other catheter mostly it can be fit with a uh, multiple uh, with a, uh, um, Uh, M plus catheter 
or sometimes multi-purpose or sometimes tiger catheter, you can hook the coronary artery, right coronary artery. Sometimes it also can uh, appear in the high up when ostium is located up instead of on from the lateral side. So here also the right catheter with a little curve at the tip will not fit coaxially. Here, what you need to do, take a multi-purpose catheter, which will fit nicely coaxially with the right coronary. One thing you also need uh, to uh, know the if a patient has got a left coronary only, then there is no circumflex. You must think that the circumflex might have come from the right coronary. So after doing the left side, you need to cannulate the right coronary with the intention to see any anomalous origin of the circumflex, what happened in this case. The circumflex is arising from the right sinus, but different opening. So here also you need to little man manipulation selectively for the circumflex and also for the <laughs> right coronary. So this way you can uh, uh, avoid uh, um, incomplete uh, angiogram. Unless you uh, identify the circumflex, the procedure is incomplete or imperfect. Sometimes uh, you may think that the vessel is diseased from the ostium. Once you uh, place the catheter at the ostium, there is a dumping, there is a hypotension, bradycardia. So in that case, you need to quick uh, engage and disengage. With a clockwise rotation, you engage it and anti-clockwise uh, disengage. By this way, you can avoid unnecessary ischemia for the uh, right coronary. Artery. Next question comes the injection of the dye. This is important in a sense. Say for example, this is a patient where coronary artery was huge. But you have taken five friends catheter. So five friends catheter may not give adequate dye to fill up the coronaries. Here you are seeing, but not uh, clearly about the lesion, the circumflex, and also distal level. So in that case, if you take a bigger lumen catheter, like if you take a six friends catheter, it properly give adequate dye to visualize the coronary arteries. Another issue is you should take the cine for at least four to five second five cardiac cycle. Here they have taken two and a half cycle. So you are not seeing properly, especially in a patient with a contralateral obstruction of the coronary artery, you must take the, uh, the uh, cine for at least four to five cardiac cycle to fill up the whole coronary artery and also, if necessary, the contralateral uh, collateral channel. Means that you should inject appropriate time. Another mistake uh, many a time uh, initiate some complication, like this is a patient with almost fused, totally occluded RCA and LCX in a bypass guard vessel, you are seeing almost blushing the whole myocardium with the dye. And that's a dangerous thing in a way. And that happened in this patient, here you see, it, it initiated ventricular fibrillation. You see, the ventricular fibrillation started at the end. You see, ventricular fibrillation. So means that if you forcefully inject, it can cause blushing of the whole myocardium and may lead to a uh, uh, complication, malignant arrhythmia. Similarly, in a, in a patient with a non-dominant vessel with a coronal branch, if you do an uh, injection of same amount of dye, then it also can initiate uh, arrhythmia like ventricular fibrillation. So be careful in injecting a non-dominant right coronary artery. And as I said, you need to have a prolonged exposure to see the collateral. Is it a patient with a total occlusion LED? Is been retrograde feeling by the RCA to his PDA and also coronal browns. Sometimes as the diagnostic catheter has got little backup support. So if you push too much, 
you see there will be back bouncing of the catheter and there will be more of sinus flush little dye will enter the coronary artery for proper visualization so in that case you need to give sustain and uniform pressure of injection so that the catheter will not bounce back uh, it, it usually happen in a, a dilated patient where the catheter is not properly coaxially placed in that case it happen and and is mostly in the radial it it is a, a regular phenomena because the radial the, the catheter is not stable like femoral approach and this is the, that patient i have shown this the the, the deep in engagement of the catheter can initiate many things can cause spasm and can initiate any dissection if there is any blockage at the proximal uh, then it can dissect the coronary artery so be careful about too much pushing the catheter because it's a pre-shaped catheter if you push it too much then it will engage deeply within the coronary artery and if there is any atherosclerotic plaque proximally every chance of a dissection of the coronary artery and here happened at the coronary spasm which was been relieved by intercoronary gtn you see this is that is the patient that i the study that i have told in early after gtn it looked like this now uh, another topic is to take the cine in different projection for the same coronary artery as you know the coronary artery the lesion is not always concentric sometime it may be eccentrically placed so if the beam does not enter perpendicularly in one view you will see only the block is only 20% in other view you will see the 90% so if you don't take the proper view which is perpendicular to the lesion you may miss this lesion what happened in this patient uh, now what is the common view uh, commonly uh, we usually if you consider uh, uh, the first ap view RO cranial and then AP cranial and sometimes we need to see the lateral view of both the right or left is the right coronary artery and also the distal LED so this is a schematic diagram this is the cranial this is the head of the patient towards head is the cranial towards leg is the caudal and this is the leg this is the right side this is the left side this oblique view is the towards the right side it can go up to 90 degree become right, left uh, uh, right lateral and if you take uh, on the left side is the left lateral and in between maybe 30 40 50 whatever it is now uh, the example of this uh, use of this multiple projection is that this is the patient which the angiogram done in one view you are not seeing the whole length of the LED. You are seeing good view on the circumflex and also OM. But the same patient, if you take the caudal view, you are seeing a lesion here. The same patient, if you take cranial view, you are not seeing this lesion. But in the cranial, yellow cranial vision with uh, uh, areo uh, angulation, RO cranial view then you see there's a critical lesion here in the LED so the same vessel of different angle you can identify exactly what is the location and what is the severity of the disease and now see here in the patient you see it looks like there is a diagonal osteal disease and there's a very big size vessel so for planning to do angioplasty for this diagonal vessel with this view will be a mistake because if you go for angioplasty for this it will compromise the LED but if you take the other view like this you see
the diagonal is far away. Is the diagonal is far away from the origin. It is not osteal. It is a mid segment. So it's very easy to do angioplasties. So this is the importance of taking multiple view projection. Sometimes uh, it is uh, uh, many a time happen. Hooking the coronary artery, it selected into the coronal branch, and you may think that this is a non-dominant vessel. So you may finish it here, but it is a mistake because. This patient, this patient has got a dominant circumference, dominant right coronal artery. That is a coronal branch. So you should exactly do angiogram to avoid uh, the selective coronal um, injection. This is another view of uh, another uh, slide of the importance of the view oblique view. This is the patient has taken shallow AP. The LED is not seen here. It looks like LED is blocked totally here. But if you take this view with a little cranial angulation on the right side, separating the diagonal and LED, you see LED is clear here. It is well visualized. It is not 100% blocked. So this is the importance of this is another view, circumflex, uh, the caudal view. So this is the importance of taking multiple view for the coronary arteries. There are some issue like the tortuosity of the vessel sometimes make a lot of trouble in diagnostic procedure, especially in elderly people, where torqueability of this diagnostic catheter is not one to one and very difficult to, uh, to manipulate the catheter at the ostium. In that case, you should take a long sheath of 23 centimeter. It will extend from the femoral artery up to the bifurcation to avoid this torture segment so that you can easily cannulate, easily manipulate the catheter wherever you want, clockwise or anticlockwise. This is especially in femoral approach with the tortuous coronary artery. Same thing can happen nowadays in the radial artery. Radial artery is a small caliber artery but it is very sensitive. If you do too much of manipulation, it will go into a spasm. So if you feel there is a resistance, immediately you should check it by hand injection so that you will see what is the location, how it's going on. In that case, you may take a gliding wire or you may take a coronary wire. Like this is a coronary wire. You can, you can track this coronary wire through this and you can finish the job without much uh, manipulating the catheter uh, within the coronary artery, uh, within the uh, radial artery. Sometime, uh, while you have gone up to the subclavian, here the regular wall may not cross. If you do too much of manipulation, the same thing will happen, the radial artery will go to a spasm. It, you can easily avoid it by taking a gliding catheter, gliding wire, like a terimo, it will smoothly cross the, that obstruction. Not really obstruction, it's the angulation and calcif calcification. So it smoothly cross that obstructed area, resistant area. And you can uh, take the catheter over the wire. Sometimes it happens if you approach it from the left side, especially in unfolded or, or, uh, or uh, aortic, aortic aneurysm uh, uh, ascending or dilatation. In that case, what you need to do, you can ask the patient to take a deep breath. Once a deep breath, then the unfolding, or it will be a little bit folded and the catheter and the wire can cross within, uh, uh, instead of descending aorta into the ascending aorta. And thereafter, you can track the catheter over the wire. Uh, one interesting uh, segment, actually, I want to uh, uh, show to you that Nowadays, we don't need to do LV graphy, but LV graphy also you need to know. There is a technique. Yes, a, your technician can do procedure because all these are pre-shaped catheter, but the technician does it blindly, but you are doing it with knowing the technique. So this is one of the techniques that you can avoid unnecessary manipulation of a catheter to enter the LV through the aortic valve, especially in 
in, in patient with sclerotic aortic valve where there's a difficulties. Here, this one technique is the first, take the wire, the floppy part will enter the, across the valve easily. And once the floppy part enter, then over the wire, you take the uh, catheter over the wire to the uh, uh, LV crossing the aortic valve. This is another technique. You just, wire was that the tip, slowly pull the wire and push the catheter, make a U shape. Once you make a U shape, then push the wire up to the tip. And once it is up to the tip, then all together pull a little bit. And it is unfolded slowly when it cross, it prolapses into the LV. And you can, uh, you can do it repeatedly the same uh, uh, way. Uh, it's not that it has gone accidentally. It is the technique to cross the aortic valve uh, 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 um, in a patient with uh, some time in the aortic sclerosis. Although we don't need to do it nowadays because of the echocardiographic benefit. Here also I'm saying this, don't do it half-hearted. This is the half-hearted job. This is a half-hearted job in a sense. Okay, angiogram done, although coming out, let us see the renal artery but it was not been done properly. If you want to do it, do it properly. Do it selectively right, then left, not like this. Means that wholehearted, because you may not do this procedure second time. For if the patient next time come with a hypertension, and if you feel that could be because of renal artery stenosis with this angiogram, you may not give any opinion, but if you've done it properly, definitely you can explain, no, this is not because of renal artery stenosis. This is, is a essential hypertension. Now, uh, nowadays we are coming with a lot of patient with a, a post bypass angiogram. Um, anatomical identification of the blockage. In general, before doing angiogram to the graft vessel, you must know the surgical report of that patient where the where was the graft been done. It is written in all surgical note, the lima to LAD, saponous venous graft to PDA, OAM, PDA, OLBD. Detail is there. So you must know three graft or four graft before entering into the cath lab. Don't go blindly to see where it is, because you may not exactly hook the graft vessel easily as like a native vessel. So it is better to do a root autography non-selectively to visualize the overall uh, uh, the graft, because this dye will enter selectively to the graft and you can identify or gaze. They take a selective catheter to cannulate the graft vessel. For example, in Lima, the best you can read with the RNO view and the common catheter used is RCA catheter or IMA catheter. Because these two catheters coaxially fit with the uh, uh, internal memory artery. But distal anastomosis of the LED, the best view on the epicranial or lateral view. So you must take this to view in patient with post CABG to see the anastomotic side. This is the place many a time you need to a special attention to see the anastomotic osteolosis. Unless you perpendicularly direct the beam, you may not identify the osteolosis, distal anastomotic osteolosis. For PDA graft, usually all the graft in the uh, venous graft is taken from the anterior surface of the aorta. For the right sided, it is little bit on the right. And for the left sided, like OM, RAM, left side of the anterior surface of the aorta. And for the view, the arts right corner uh, visualization is done by LAO view projection. are equally important. Even mild case, mild disease is also disease. Today it is mild. 
tomorrow it can be severe so this is also important the blocker more aggressive to be on nitrate so these are the percentage usually we say about the severity of the disease sometimes we 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 see that the patient uh, the, after lot of struggle we are not seeing properly because the patient is too much obese the coronary flow is very high especially in anemia or very tachy and also as uh, with a large uh, with the angulation can reduces the uh, visualization so solution is to take a larger catheter lumen and also uh, um, give vigorous injection and sometime needs to increase the kv of the uh, x beam now a little bit about the complication of the angiogram it is important is not like taking two cc blood and test it and if uh, it is uh, uh, the report is not um, uh, um, helpful take another two cc not like that that's why it, the angiogram is uh, uh, a test that needs to be the patient with the hospital it is something like a minimum type of surgical uh, procedure type preparation of the patient and you need all possible measure to alleviate the complication to tackle the complication so you must know the complication so that if you know the complication you can manage it properly in time the major complication is uh, a death myocardial infarction cerebrovascular accident arrhythmia especially uh, minor or maybe malignant arrhythmia vascular complication although it is now it is, is less because of so from femoral to radial just related uh, nephropathy or allergic re reaction there may be hemodynamic complication of hypotension or um, hypertension there may be a rupture or perforation of the vessel or even cardiac chamber or, or even coronary arteries there are some minor complication like air embolism uh, especially uh, in an elderly patient with atherosclerotic uh, embolization of the cholesterol both in the coronary and also the cerebral there may be lactic acidosis especially in diabetic patient who are on metformin there is a chances of infection so these are although very rare but in general one of the study uh, done on 60000 patient uh, all are very very low like mortality is only 0.1% myocardial infarction 0.05% cerebral accident 0.07% arrhythmia 0.38% vascular complication 0.4% nowadays it is less than this contrast reaction 0.3% hemodynamic complication less than uh, uh, 0.2% so these are complication but even if it happened to one person patient it is 100% for him so you must be very careful in doing the procedure and also here is also the importance of counseling if you counsel the patient about the complication and if anything happen at least you will not face the trouble given by the patient attendants so there are some complication uh, related to multifactorial like increased medical risk increased cardiac risk increase in vascular risk and also increase the death so what are the uh, risk in medical condition like more than age 70 years is a morbid obesity this is a cachectic patient uncontrolled diabetes desaturated patient severe copd renal insufficiency these are the medical condition that increase the risk of complication similarly the cardiac issue itself can can cause a lot of complication like a patient with a triple vessel disease leptman disease critical leptman disease in is a functional class 4 or significant mitral or aortic valve disease or in prostatic valve ejection fraction less than 30% high risk treadmill uh, like hypotension or severe ischemia patient with pulmonary hypertension and page voice pressure uh, more than 25 especially in uh, poor lb function or mitral regurgitation these are the patient that were the increased risk of uh, complication and vascular risk is that the patient may be on uh, bleeding diathesis there may be patient may be on anticoagulation there may be uncontrolled hypertension severe peripheral vascular disease recent stroke severe aortic disease all this can lead to 
complication like bleeding, hematoma, pseudoaneurysm, lot many things related to angiography. And there is a risk of death, although it is very less, but usually if it is more than 70 years, female preponderance, patient with class four heart failure has got 10 times more chances of death compared to class one and class two. Multiversal disease or Lepman patient, disease patient has got 20 times more chance of death than compared to single vessel disease. Ejection fraction less than 30 has got 10 times more chance of complication than normal. Similarly, vulvar heart disease and severe non-cardiac uh, situation like uh, uncontrolled diabetes. So uh, in nutshell, uh, uh, the take home message is don't be hurry. Check the vital sign, lab investigation, viral marker, extra chest, and assess the puncture site at the maximum palpable pulse to avoid multiple attempts and inevitable complication. Choose appropriate catheter from the X-ray film, proper injection, appropriate amount of dye with sustained pressure and appropriate time. Take multiple views to delineate the size, extent and severity of the disease and always keep in the monitor to see the ECG and pressure cuff. With this few, thank you very much. All of you have a patient hearing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Excellent practical demonstration. Nice. AR catheter or uh, AL2 catheter can be used to cannulate the right anomalous catheter. But try to do it with minimum manipulation because in the radial route, if you repeatedly change the catheter, then at time, there will be spasm and you may abandon through the radial route, you may need to go to the femoral. So commonly for the right, most of the time, the tiger can is enough. Sometimes you may need a one size smaller left jutkins like JL3. Uh, Rarely you may need a uh, M plus catheter. For the right coronary, you usually uh, tiger is enough. Sometimes you may need a right coronary catheter to selectively hook. Sometimes multi-purpose catheter, or rarely you need uh, air, air, uh, uh, air two or AL AL two for the right. Thank you, sir. And in some case, can I in some case, if you think that you cannot do a root autography, identify the location, then choose the catheter. And if you feel that the right coronary is, is non-dominant, don't waste your time. If it is totally occluded, been nicely seen retrogradely, don't waste your time. Yes, for making proper diagnosis, you need selective angiogram. Because it is the test, you cannot do it really repeatedly. But most of the cases, most 99.9%, .9 you can come out. I rarely, uh, you, can, you cannot hook it. But uh, I think, no, I should do it by any means. Because it will create problem. It will invite complication. Uh, can I add something, yeah. sir? Sure. Very often the youngsters get problem in engaging the right coronary. So if it is very low down in the sinus, if you cannot engage with the JR, then you can use the air. It, it's near yeah. the floor. If it is high up, then you can use the air too. Yeah. That's better. Yes, you can. Thank you, That's sir. True. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you can ask the patient to take a deep breath. Yes, that helps. So, so th that can also help. That helps. Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor Jalal sir with us. Professor Muhammad Jalaluddin sir. 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 Salaam alaikum Jalal, sir. 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 Wa alaikum salam. Sir. Thank you Dr. Muhammad Jaman. Sir. Are you hearing? Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I am very happy that you have discussed the born angiogram. Though many Many doctors may think, many cardiologists may think that it is a very simple thing. 
Kone angiogram is a very simple one. Uh, uh, angioplasty is the top one, but it is not so. Sometimes coronary angiogram also may have some complications that you have already mentioned. So, knowing these complications, all the patients should be prepared properly from counseling up to the end of the coronary angiogram. And Dr. Mumidam has mentioned all the things from beginning to end very nicely. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Khaled Mosin, sir. Do you hear me, sir? Yes. Uh, Any comments or questions? Yeah. Sir? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Jaman, sir, who taught me to do coronary angiogram in mid 90s <laughs> when we were working in the same unit of Monwar, sir, in an ICBD. Yeah. He <clears> taught <throat> me hands on. Uh, actually, I, 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 he has told everything, but uh, I would request, sir, to take a separate class on uh, particularly the radial angiogram because there are uh, separate tips yeah. and tricks for catheter manipulation and catheter engagement. Today, I think it is predominantly the femoral angiogram for femoral. the beginners. Yeah. So I would request, yeah. sir. And one thing. Okay, next time. Yes. And one thing I would like to say that the young operators are frequently overwhelmed by the radiographers. That's a big problem. I have never seen Jaman sir to be dominated by the radiographers. But the youngers <laughs> are dominated by the radiographers. They tend to move the table too much. But even when we are looking for the collaterals, it is absolutely forbidden to move the table. But they tend to move the table. And some important information and uh, pictures are deleted. So I would request uh, my colleagues that don't be overwhelmed by the radiographers until or unless they are very much skilled and uh, i would one uh, ask some tip from sir in a, in a mm. extremely dilated aorta particularly in a patient with aortic valve disease what are your uh, suggestions to engage because we often find I'm problem young, in engaging the coronaries if thank you has, sir. i know uh, I aortic regurgitation is a really especially aortic stenosis i am telling you Doing angiogram, diagnostic angiogram for aortic stenosis. This patient, be careful. Patient may collapse in the table. So it is the utmost uh, uh, step to be taken by the operator while doing aortic valve disease patient angiogram. Commonly, aortic stenosis patient or regurgitation, the aortic root is dilated. So usually you need to take a bigger curve like 4 4.5 even 5 curve for the right uh, for the led and sometime al2 because of the curve and here in aortic valve disease you just it, is, it has been done preoperatively so you don't need to go for a detail of 6 7 views because you are guiding surgeon whether he need simultaneous bypass grafting or not. So two, three view for the LED, epicranial, lateral, um, um, epicranial, uh, elocranial, and RO coral is enough. For the right coronary, similarly, you need to take a five curve, sometime uh, uh, your uh, 4.5 curve. Here also you need a uh, bigger caliber catheter not five friends or four friends what we need to do in the tiger because here you need to inject at least six seven ml of dye because of the dilated aorta dilated blood vessel and you need to manipulate the catheter because it jerks with the beat so if you take a small caliber catheter then it is very difficult to torque them if you torque two times it will over torque there. So take a bigger caliber catheter like six francs. So at least it will be better than a, a small caliber like three, four francs or five francs. So I, I think these are the tips that you should take minimum view and the car be bigger. This is my Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, as Dr. Khaled Moussins has said, uh, today's class is femoral approach on I, I, I just uh, for the beginners for the fellows he, sh he should do at least 500 femoral angiogram before radial because femoral is for the reflex of the operator operator should gain reflex for the angiogram 
you should on your reflex no, after you are, yes sir mohsin actually sir. femoral uh, basically the technique of radial artery approach is much different from the femoral yes sir you need more manipulation for radial but yes sir. minimum manipulation for femoral so there are some technical aspect more in radial so all you need to know how to do femoral because femoral catheterization is easier yes sir yes sir Junior catheter, should... all you can you can yes, if you if doesn't fit with the 3.5 take 4 yes, if sir. not then 3 but for the radial if you change the catheter two three times then there will be spasm of the coronary artery so yes, in sir. that respect i should say at least he should know how to do femoral artery number one secondly also know to tackle the complication related to femoral artery puncture like hematoma pseudoaneurysm yes, retroperitoneal hematoma these things how to tackle this yes sir at least 500 angiogram he did a femoral angiogram then do a radial angiogram thank you sir dr dhiman monik dr dhiman monik do you hear me can hear you yes sir yes uh, yes, thank you, sir. Sir was my teacher in NICBD uh, when I was a teacher <laughs> student. And sir, when I have a, a training in fellowship training in National Heart Foundation, sir was there for about three months. Sir taught me uh, in with his own hands, puncture and engaging the catheter. Uh, to this uh, great lecture of sir, I want to add something uh, today. Uh, yeah. Uh, regarding sir i want to add something about the history of the patient uh, history is a uh, important vital for every yeah. patient if the patient has class 4 uh, class 3 or class 4 angina then angiogram should be done very cautiously and if the patient has ett positive in first stage stage 1 or there is dynamic changes in the ecg or there is a uh, chest pain with hypotension then all these patients should be dealt very carefully. And in this patient, I think uh, the right side of the angiogram should be done first and then the left side. As because all these are the features of uh, left main disease. And if uh, suspected, if the operator suspected that there is a left main disease, then uh, a non selective. Uh, and a shot can be taken on the uh, on the left without en engaging the left side. Then you are safe. In the angiogram, I in to me, two things are uh, most uh, grievous. One is the die, and one is the ejection fraction. As if the ejection fraction is low, more uh, uh, risk is the patient for doing an angiogram. And the die, if the die hang in the arteries, then uh, it is very dangerous. You should pull the catheter. Is uh, uh, if uh, you have engaged the right side and uh, if you engage the right side and the die is hanging, you should pull the catheter or you should pull up the catheter because if you push more die, then there will be BT or BF or asystole. Same in the left side. If die and ejection less ejection fraction, these two things are to me. Is very dangerous for doing an angiogram. Uh, thank you all for giving me time to some. Thank you, sir. Uh, As the Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. What said, is the uh, train of uh, angiogram access in Bangladesh? Is it radial or femoral? You Sorry? said 500 femoral and then radial. But here, we start from the day one, start doing radial from the fellows. So no, I don't know no, what is the trade. No, my feeling is my feeling is that. Uh, as Mohsin said, 500, I should say, not necessarily 500, at least he should know. Yeah, sure. uh, there's a story I told you, the initially the lapar laparoscopic surgery, surgeon don't know how to op op open the abdomen. So they keep the standby surgeon to yes, bail sir. out them, to bail out them. Here in catheter lab, if you are a radialist, and if you don't know how to do femoral, you may not ask somebody who is femoral expert to be in cath lab. So you must know the technique of, at least, I should say, at least 100 procedures should know, not truly 500. 
100 is enough to learn how to do femoral at least bail out and moreover uh, in cath lab the combined combined effort of all of your colleague is very important sometime sometime uh, you may take help from your junior colleague you may take your senior colleague don't hesitate to ask them to rush in an emergency even the the uh, your expert technician can also help you so in cath lab uh, these are the things actually you need to be considered radial yes radial nowadays most of the cardiologists even i i, I those who are doing radial only the fellow who are working with him will never see how to do radial puncture uh, femoral puncture but they are expert in radial puncture so these are the things i think they should know for their own benefit for own uh, uh, interest they should learn how to do femoral one and i said that dhiman said nicely yes patient the history i have had mentioned everything about the who are the patient are at risk of yes, complication triple yes, vessel sir. disease yes, so they must be very careful the problem is that as you said doing left first then right first it, it was better in early age when we used to do through femoral here in through radial this choice has been changed <coughs> Think that as quickly as possible you finish the job. Don't do too much manipulation. If you feel that that there is a critical left main, you don't need to give too many five view for this LED. Okay, take two view, then go for the right coronary. Take one or two view. Then you think about the hemodynamics of the patient. If the patient can tolerate, then you can proceed for the other views. Thank so you, I sir. I mean. <coughs> Dr. Sir, Azizul Lok sir, can I ask one more question? So, Dr. Azizul Lok sir, Dr. Sir, yes, Azizul Lok sir, please hear me, sir. Sir, unmute him, sir. Sir, unmute him, sir. Can I ask sir, one more? Sir, unmute, sir. Azizul Lok sir, ideal? Can you just tell our guys what are the ideal views for austere left main, distal left main, austere LED, austere yes. diagonal branch, and uh, austere uh, PDAs? or still rca so these are very important views i miss because of my internet problem whether you have mentioned or not actually I'm... actually okay, nice. not there is no single view fixed for everybody it is because of the anatomical variation of the heart the aortic root the disease process and epicranial is the view to see the ostium of left main epicranial to see the ostium of the led and circumflex is the spider view spider view means the elo caudal or t fellow t fellow means that elo cranial 30 and um, uh, um, cranial 30 and elo 70 here you can the mid segment of the led and part of the left um, uh, proximal led if you want to see the proximal part of the led the best is to go for caudal view rao caudal or rao view you can see the proximal segment if you want to see the uh, distal then you can use a lateral view you can use a uh, elo cranial view these are the view as usually for separating the diagonal and uh, led you should take a stiff elo cranial and rao cranial this two view can separate the led from the diagonal and for pda you should take stiff elo or you can take a lateral view for ostial pda as i said this is not a fixed for anything because of the variation of the anatomy uh, and the disease pattern but you just give a hand injection slowly angular change the angulation maybe sometime you will see it very nice at 30 degree but if you 
take 20 degree it may not be well visualized so this way you can it can calibrate uh, the uh, angle and take views yes. martin sir uh, ajit dilok sir said ajit sir do you hear me ajit sir salam to start salam to start all salam assalamu alaikum yes. you hear me now yes yes okay. yes sir Stamitu, sir. Dr. Mohammed Zaman is a very great presenter, a very good teacher, and he can make a very complicated issue and he can present in a simpler way. Like every, I heard a lot of presentation of Dr. Mohammed Zaman. Today is also his excellent presentation, and I think this lecture will be benefited by the young cardiologist and also the. <coughs> they also benefited to some extent but i touch uh, for in this uh, time i want to touch uh, another side of dr mohan zaman i have observed for long days in internal cardiology in bangladesh but when dr mohan zaman come in the leadership of the internal cardiology in bangladesh under his ever leadership now this subject is very much popular and he has raised this standard of internal cardiology in bangladesh to a higher level a lot of cardiologists especially this specialty now has spread all over bangladesh and lot of sessions is going on and most of the thing a lot of patients are benefited especially also open a time who are going abroad they are now doing the procedure here by him and also by his by his disciples who had been trained by him so i really i congratulated my friend dr mohan zaman in, in spite of his the busy schedule today he is making time to give lecture in this situation and hope if this thing will continue and the junior cardiologists they will keep their energy and they will just follow dr mohan zaman what energy he has because i know him when he came to bangladesh how he struggle and now he coming to a such a level and now he gives the leadership i hope that he will do this sort of things in the coming future and also i am giving congratulations to professor abdul wahid choudhury dr mohsin to make this this sort of program so that everybody benefit benefited and they remain dynamic in this static period of corona time so i again congratulate dr mohan zaman and other fellow my fellow cardiologists to keep bangladesh going on in in this subject thank you very much uh, thank, thank you, you actually in this thank you. connection i want to i want to express my gratitude and respect to my professor zalal sir and some of our legendary cardiologist who gave us the opportunity to make our career in intervention i remember i did my first intervention with one of the patient of professor zalal and i lost the stent the first stent i lost one of his patient but he gave me so much courage to go ahead he was like an umbrella and we actually because of these people we actually we are here i remember professor esar khan sir the patient of first mitral stenosis he admitted under him for cmc i requested him sir can you give this patient to me i'll do ptmc then he goes okay go and he allow me to do ptmc so these are my legendary teacher who on that time when the major issue was to go abroad for the cardiology treatment these are the person who gave us the courage who pushed us to come forward to deal with this sort of patient that's why we are here i am really salute to my all blabet teacher and i know you know uh, still some of them are alive uh, professor jafar sir has uh, recently passed away professor amanullah sir recently had a stroke uh, he is uh, completely dementic he cannot uh, recognize his son or wife on the other day i went he cannot recognize me so we should we should remember all this legendary person uh every day every day i know the newer cardiologists don't know this legendary people 
like Professor Zalal, Professor Esar Khan, Professor Nobi Alam Khan, Professor Amanullah sir, Professor Abu Zafar sir, uh, Professor Hasina Banu. So these are the person who gave us the opportunity to a place where we are here. And I expect my fellow descendant will be much better than us because they are now seeing more than what we have seen. Sir. Hopefully in future they will do much better. Thank you, sir. Jalal thank sir, you, sir, thank you, sir. Jalal sir, do you, do you add something? Yes, I'd like to say one thing. That yes, sir. Dr. Mohan Ojoan was my beloved student, was very brilliant student. Not only as a student, I also, I was the guide of his thesis and I was his examiner in every part. His success was very brilliant. Not only his student life, later on, I found him everywhere in NITVD, in uh, Heart Foundation, and also later on in United Hospital. Everywhere his success has become so that not only among the doctors, also in the common people of the whole of Bangladesh, he is known as cardiologist, interventional cardiologist. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I feel proud of him. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shajal. Shajal, Arif Raman Shajal, do you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Lots of question. Please uh, read the question yeah. in the chat box. I think Please read the question to, in the chat one box. Suggestion to uh, Mohsin, in future, yes, they, we, we just concentrate on only coronary angiogram. There are so many aspects of angiogram like congenital heart disease, peripheral angiogram. These are things I think you should continue <coughs> part of, uh, may not be uh, myself, somebody who are doing peripheral, they should give a lecture on peripheral angiogram. Thank you, sir. Thank Those you, sir. Your cardiologist you. should do for diagnostic uh, uh, angiogram, uh, congenital angiogram. These are the part you can. Do you have uh, a uh, question only yes, on angiogram? No okay, complication, sir. only on angiogram. Uh, Okay. At first, I'd like to thank uh, our sir, Mohan Jamal sir, for a brilliant lecture. It was very helpful for us because it is uh, made for us also because we are the beginners. So there are lots of questions uh, in this uh, period which is not possible to cover all. So we, uh, we are asking a few selective questions. So, uh, so there are some patients, uh, mostly you refer for CT angiogram. What are those group of yeah. patients those who have you sent for a CT angiogram? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. CT angiogram is a non-invasive very simple test and it has got some uh, indication uh, but in our country from the very beginning it was been misinterpreted by the businessman when it came first in bangladesh the opening ceremony was done in uh, chin motri uh, convention center and invitee was all the parents of scholastic high school so the test should be guided by the doctor not should be the choice is guided the people so we doctor should know which patient needs CT which patient don't need CT in general the probability is most important to guide us which patient needs CT. If you feel the probability from his history, from ECG, X-ray, ECHO, ETT, there is, if there is a high probability, he should go for conventional angiogram. And if there is any low probabilities, he should go for screening test non-invasively by CT angio. Patient came with unstable angina or non-STMI or STMI, there is no point to go for CT angiogram. It is, the reason is this, the patient are scared of angiogram. So they choose something which is less risky. So it is we, it is we who should motivate the patient, counsel the patient. Oh, you need this. The patient choice should be from our side. I think it is the limitations of we doctor fail to motivate the people that city angio in other ways city angio is if you hazardous point of view 
CTO NGO is much hazardous than angiogram because it takes lot of radiation exposure, it takes double dose of uh, of uh, your right. time, and it takes lot of time. So it should be very clear to the patient that who need CT, who don't need CT. In general, I said those who are of high probabilities should go for conventional angiogram. Those who are of low probabilities should go for CT. That is my common sense exp explanation of your answer. Thank you, sir. Can I, can I add something? Can I add something? Sure, sure. Sure. For, for this country, I tell my patients, well, CT will give you uh, uh, two times more, uh, three times more radiation, two times more dye, uh, around 75% of the information that can be available actually from the angiogram. And the cost is also around 75%. So it's very good to say that you do not have the disease, but it's not good to say that you have the disease. So you have, Thank as you, he was saying, is, is, it is low probability, go for CT. It's high probability, you, you must not do CT. That's a waste of time and money. So there are some group of people who usually deny to undergo coronary angiogram. So other than this, there is any other contraindication to undergo coronary angiogram? No, the thing is that contraindication is the only I feel <coughs> contraindication should be <coughs> From the medical point of view, nothing like psychological. If psychological, then it is our responsibilities to convince the patient, to motivate the patient. Say, for example, if somebody is having fever for 10 days, I ask for viral test. Patient will say, no, I will not take, give any blood. Will it, be, will, will, it, will it solve the problem? No. You need the blood test. So counsel the patient, same with the angiogram, unless you convince the patient that without angiogram, I cannot say anything. I, I, I do believe the simple story said 20 years back, all the patient, almost 95% patient used to do their cardiac treatment being done by other than Bangladesh in India, Singapore, Bangkok. The same scenario is now in Bangladesh most of the patient coming to Dhaka. If you compare the confidence point of view, initially the whole country has got little confidence on us. Now, the peripheral patient has got little confidence on the local doctor, more confidence on us. So this difference is because you, how you motivate the patient, how not only just telling something to the patient, patient will jump and come to, it is the totality. Your behavior, your past history, your accountability, your sincerity, your dedication, your honesty, everything bears in getting confidence to the patient. Yes. This is my, my feeling is that getting the confidence, not that the telling the story, it is a simple thing, no need, it will take only two minutes, three minutes, no. Sometimes you need to convince the patient by another patient because the patient is a better motivator than you. Right. So Thank you, sir. This way, by this way, you can motivate the patient. Thank then you, sir. Thank you, sir. Way. Are you, sir, just one minute. Sir, are there are um, lots of patients who have got low ejection fraction, suppose less than 35 yeah. or 30, but they need angiogram. What are the extra precautions you have to take extra while doing precaution this? Precaution means that here, first of all, preparation of the patient. Patient should be dry. Before, before procedure, the patient should not be wet. Means that the, he should not be fluid overloaded. He should be restricted fluid beforehand. Number two, <coughs> number two is that you can you can take a right heart catheter catheter in the pulmonary artery to evaluate the PA pressure. So this is the way you can avoid the unnecessary complication of severe LV dysfunction patient for coronary Most important is that improved his NYIS class from four to three, three to two. Because you need to allow the patient to lie flat. If he cannot lie flat, then 
in some cases if you cannot do these things but patient need desperately for the angiogram you just down the patient do intubation do the procedure and remove or extubated after 3 to 4 hours thank you are you this is a, this is another i just i just uh, i had two uh, covid fighter here here that is dr md fazlul islam and dr ibrahim from chitagan yeah. here ah, covid, covid survivor ibrahim. dr ibrahim okay dr ibrahim do you hear me uh, he is the ah, covid fighter yes, and he ibrahim uh, thanks allah thank you. he is with us Seeing good uh, yeah ibrahim do you uh, say something unmute how is you how are you now friend ibrahim unmute, unmute. please please unmute ibrahim he is a uh, weak i think so yes sir. okay now, ibrahim how are you how are you you hear me yeah yeah, yeah. how are you friend yeah uh, alhamdulillah i'm fine now uh, uh, i enjoyed uh, the lecture of professor momini jawan very much uh, i am directly student of sir and i uh, went to united hospital for one month uh, to learn from sir and uh, uh, i worked there for one month and this lecture is very much important for all i think uh, who are doing intervention all uh, have been benefited from it uh, thank you very much sir dr md fazil islam he also one of the covid fighters yes. Dr. Fazil Islam, yes. do you Salam. hear me? Thank you. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Any question? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. First of all, I express my gratitude to Allah and and my especially to Professor Abdul Wahid Choudhury sir, who was communicated with me during my illness, and I was guided by him, and I continued everything, and Allah has allowed me to get rid of the all the problems. I started anoxaparin early. Now I am on rivaroxaban, doing fine. Alhamdulillah. Initially, I was very sick, and I was feeling chest tightness. Allah has allowed me to come up. Now in the rivar, I'm feeling weak. But the the thing is that I I especially joined this lecture because of Professor Mamrud Jamal, and thanks to the organizers like Dr. Mohsin and Abdul Rasul, it's a great initiative for the uh, future light bearers. who are the particular the residents and the and the future manpower yeah, unmute yourself yeah but dr five will do the okay. job sir can you hear me can you hear yeah. me yeah yeah and yes, i yes, yes. i started my job in nicv in 2001 and i found mamlud jamal sir how vigilant he was when he was going to do any ptms he was say fires keep the ot free and uh, he one day he took the patient by pushing the trolley to the wall and in the second hour we had to open the patient after when there was some problem so this is he said the honest patient and all this works and it is to be carried on throughout your whole life there is no way to come out of the uh, way and the, these things will reward you in the long run and we want to be enlightened by all these uh, lectures and the personality and the personality and also i uh, express my gratitude and the respect to professor jalal sir with whom i started my job in nicv in back in 2001 and uh, uh, abdul choudhury sir dr mohsin and uh, i will seek you all to pray for me so that i can start my work in future because i am a man of work and worship and i pass in this time in worship, worship i want to come back to my full swing of work inshallah inshallah all the best wish thank you alhamdulillah dr nurulam do you hear me am i audible am i yeah. audible yeah. mohsin bhai yes yes, yes. thank you thank you dr mohsin bhai for giving me the opportunity to say something first of all uh, uh, mohsin jawan sir showed a picture that four or five guys are sitting having their uh, radial cannula in their hand just uh, i i find it amazing uh, i personally i am a radial operator so i know how difficult or how expertise needed to convert radial artery really sir showed a very amazing picture of four or five person sitting with a radial cannula and he is doing and, and, and watching watching the, watching tv watching tv <laughs> yeah, watching tv and, and uh, the juniors have done that juniors have done okay i would, actually I, I actually give, sir, i would you, like you should to practice it have, thank you sir thank you i have I shown like it to, to you because the busy 
busy you are all working in nacbd doing 30 40 cases a day we have got four five cat lab if just if you can prepare the patient and sitting there it each take will only 2 minutes i have got three cat lab so it's a 10 patient i'll take only 15 to 20 minutes and make a system of is something like tom and jerry i said i said or everybody start tom and jerry because it is not only doing the case and shift him in the long way the person taking him got the lift ready the bed in the upstairs so whole chain should be active it's not that they're doing case in the and the next case will come so this is it needs a conditioning the everybody while doing the case then only outcome will be good i i, I actually started these things here and everybody is very much tuned with this i would like to, uh, to add uh, one or two points regarding the patient preparation fasting or not you have mentioned uh, very nicely that four hour fasting is uh, may be required but recent on paper has been published in medscape journal they showed that there is no difference between fasting and non fasting in elective cases they have showed that uh, it's especially in nicbd uh, we uh, make the patient fast since uh, last night then we put the patient on cath lab at more than 12 hours yeah more than 12 so hours this is this is a very no. a very uh, a patient so oh, okay. this is one point sir another point another point i would like to add for our uh, fellows that two things is important in cath lab that uh, as we are uh, reusing our catheters so catheter flush is very important and number two thing is uh, anticoagulation most of the catastrophe uh, happen due to the uh, 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 anticoagulant failure but just check the heparin expiry date and uh, be assured that heparin is given this catheter flush and anticoagulation these two things fellows should always remember in a procedure of angiogram thank you sir yeah no, thank you uh, no, actually, actually first thing. nowadays it is the day care so if the patient at admit in the morning finish the all lab test by 12 take their light lunch and sleep and by 4 o'clock we take him in the cath lab so <clears throat> almost 3 4 hours is the first thing because the reason is this the the dye or even uh, the, the pre operative injection or usually prophylactic that can initiate vomiting so that is a especially in elderly people uh, there is a chance of aspiration so that is the reason actually we avoid uh, but diagnostic i think that things is become so simple so simple uh, so it is uh, nowadays it is one to <laughs> so you don't need to but even then you must be careful because there is a mortality you must be careful okay thank yeah. you dr arif any question left thank you sir so there is some problem of the reporting of the angiogram when there is a eccentric yeah. lesion eccentric lesion uh, some uh, in that in case of eccentric lesion which view we will calculate so there is a, uh, the lesion which is view in the minimum percentage or in the maximum percentage maximum For, maximum always is better mm -hmm. maximum because in one view eccentric lesion is seen only those view which is perpendicularly to the lesion uh, directed towards the lesion so that is the maximum especially especially in acute coronary syndrome you can see there is a spiral dissection so you one view you are not seeing anything but there is a haziness and if you give a spin angiogram sometimes a spin arrow to elbow motion cranial to portal so that can actually cover this uh, minor uh, variation in the percentage. You should take the maximum percentage. It should be considered as. Can I can I add something? Yes, yes sir. When you have yes, an sir. eccentric lesion, it's always better to mention in the report that best seen in this view. Oh. Seventy percent, eighty percent, ninety percent lesion best seen in this view. So that will create any uh, misunderstanding. Actually, actually, you see, barely, rarely has a. What diagnostic angiogram help? It helps for planning. If it is a medical treatment, so you are the only one who will just treat the patient. But if you need something else, the other cardiologist will not see the report. He will see the angiogram. Yes. He will see the angiogram. Whatever you have written, 
60% is that drug uh, eyeball uh, estimation but the view been seen by the operator other than the person who did the angiogram he will actually decide if sometime if he feels a note is not been taken in a way as i have shown in one of the cd that it looks like in his view it it looks like significant in other it may not that is the common variation been uh, done by person to person inter observer variation is because of this so the somebody says it is 60% somebody says no it is 90% i think this variation uh, in time the more you expert in seeing there's a one thing you can make yourself competent by making some simple practice and all cattle machine has got a software to measure the percentage right so first you to look at it then you measure this how much difference from the computer to initially we used to see uh, we measured uh, lv graphy we measure it by computer and we eyeball estimate and we found that the difference but as the expertise go on there is a little difference in eye ball track versus the track ball. so uh, more you see the procedure more you uh, do the procedure more you will be expert in quantifying the lesion so there is some little variation in terms of that. thank you sir sir what are the uh, precaution you take for your renal impairment patient those who are undergoing a coronary angiogram yes there are a lot of actually guideline but to me hydration yeah. hydration and hydration no other yeah. things the simple thing third one je uh, you should check the creatinine after 48 hours yeah. after 7 days yeah. this is the common thing usually i practice and try to avoid metformin as a vitamin at least those having renal impairment So up to what creatinine level you advise coronary angiogram sir any anything uh, anything even 10 it doesn't matter reason is even a patient of transplant can, or whoever heart for the treatment of kidney you cannot spare heart right sir explain explain the patient yes you need angiogram because once the patient with renal impairment if there is lv dysfunction the patient will repeatedly admit with ldf mm. But, so but if you but, fix up the, the heart, sir, sir, sir uh, uh, but he should have plus one indication of coronary angiogram. Yeah. But but yes. he, he or she yes. should have plus one indication of coronary angiogram. Yes. Uh, can I add something? Absolutely, absolutely. Sir, indication of coronary something? angiogram is there. Sure, sure. Uh, CKD patient, the death in CKD patient in. 70 to 75% cases due to cardiovascular cause and 25% is due to infection and progression of the kidney failure and other things <clears throat> so all ckd patients are virtually cardiac patients so you assess the patient and uh, when the creatinine is 1.5 to between 2.5 you can actually do the angiogram very safely with limited Amount to die proper uh, hydration and avoidance of ACE inhibitor and ARP and metformin etc. And you can do it, and it, that there won't be any harm, any increase in the creatinine. And you can actually find out the anatomy and then decide how much aggressive treatment the patient need for future. You anticipate what can happen and you do the proper thing now. So actually there is no bar. And the patient on hemodialysis they have no bar. You do the uh, dialysis. Then do the angio. The next day they can do the uh, dialysis again. We are doing angioplasty and everything now. Thank but, you. But sir. but sir, for the message for the uh, fellows, should be plus one indication of coronary angiogram. Yes. That yes. must be said. Uh, yes. Absolutely. For the for fellows. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Doctor Asadul Jaman, on the Asadul Jaman, do you have any comments or any question from the monitor one sir? Is the radio list? Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I have uh, learned a lot uh, from today's lecture from our, our great teacher, Professor Mumin Jaman Sir. Sir, I have a question to you, Sir. Sure. Uh, can you hear me, Sir? Yeah, sure. Yes. 
sometimes we face problem for selective engagement of the lcx or led in case of separate origin have any tips for this sir yeah for for radial for radial first you should try with a uh, your um, tiger tiger catheter tiger catheter if you rotate it little clockwise it will guide towards led anti clockwise it will guide to circumflex if it fail then you need to have a deep curve of x of your tiger catheter so that it will selectively engage your led the opposite sinus will give you backup support and for circumflex you should take a jl3 3.5 if necessary but with single catheter separate origin you can just clockwise and anti clockwise sometime you can ask the patient to take a deep breath that also help to selectively cannulate it although this is more suitable for the right coronary but sometime it also help to cannulate the ls uh, john bhai can i add something sure. yes sir sometimes the guide catheter xb or uh, it's it, <coughs> they are also helpful in engaging this type of uh, uh, coronary entry xp catheter it's xp catheter is good but if somebody has got separate origin there's a problem separate origin then it's a problem it will selectively go either circumflex or is rarely you will uh, uh, commonly it will go to led rarely it LED. will go to circumflex for intervention for intervention xp catheter is a good in a way if you want to do procedure for led take two wire one wire to circumflex mm. that is a good backup support then take another wire for the led keep the wire in circumflex while doing procedure for the led they to that will give a very good support of guiding catheter especially in separate origin thank you sir otherwise, so Pranis, otherwise Pranis separate origin is equally jutkins is the best catheter or jutkins pranis lawal from chilagang uh, assalam alaikum uh, actually i heard and I learned a lot from this our lecture and sir is the living legend of our uh, many many patients from chitong uh, go to sir and sir uh, send many of the patients they do the uh, angio there and then so they feel confidence on us and actually right now in chitong on an average before corona period 30 angiogram are doing every day and chitong medical college has uh, across the 10000 angiogram milestone last year so uh, congratulations we, we feel any difficulties uh we uh, 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 in cath lab we don't hesitate to call the sir and sir never mind to uh, respond and we are sure, really sure, grateful to sir sure. thank you thank you very much sir sure, sure. thank you dr kari we any question left sir, i think uh, uh, there is a few question but the most related to complication i think that can be covered by in due process session sir uh, yeah, i yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. i want to have uh, more mutual help in never something sometimes we think we get patient who has been done with a five french catheter and because of the large size of the coronaries the anatomy is not well visualized the degree of absolute actually could not be ascertained this is very wrong i have seen uh, recently uh, before this corona episode one angiogram the patient has been advised that he has tvd but after seeing it i said i could not ascertain whether he actually have tvd or dvd whether you require cbg or pci because the whole thing is so obscure it's a sham we should not do that and sometimes we do if we do not have a six french catheter is not well visualized you can use a guide it has a larger lumen it can well visualize the coronary anatomy and that will help you guide to uh, reach the proper uh, actually proper diagnosis and a proper uh, treatment plan
actually I, I lost this one uh, you're right i have shown one slide on this because the if the vessel is too large then a five francs catheter the dye uh, is not sufficient to to fill the whole size of the uh, 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 the, uh, the vessel so in, in that case you need a, a, a bigger size catheter like if you have initially if you took the uh, uh, five francs you should take uh, you should take a six francs catheter thank you sir is this is a yes, slide you will yes, see this one you will see this is a patient with the lesion of the circumflex is not well visualized is the five francs a six plus catheter the lesion is well visualized so that is uh, uh, depends on the uh, initially i said that don't do it half heartedly you have taken one catheter is you are not happy with this okay change it because this is a test you cannot do it frequently for your previous mistake is not to see taking two cc blood and do it it's another preparation so do the things see in the room itself in the cath lab then you once you are satisfied yes yes sometime nowadays i have seen lot of uh, angiogram been done by uh, the junior in the name of the senior they are not signing i am telling you the signature is yours so you must not allow him to to uh, uh to leave the cath lab before you say yes okay then remove the patient you yourself should see this all the view has been taken nicely so now okay next there is nowadays uh, juniors are doing the case there's a lot of a lot of uh, in perfect procedure i am seeing uh, although it is is commonly uh, uh, done in government hospital because here in my hospital uh, people wants to see me patient is not unconscious so he is just looking around why i am so <laughs> i need to be there not necessarily i need to at least i will be in the cath lab assure him okay i am here so these things are my senior colleague i would request them just for good training for the junior you must say okay for every patient before patient leave from the cath lab this is my small request to all of you sir i add something sir uh, sure. in the cath lab junior when junior doing the angiogram there is a technician on the cath lab technician doing the hari she technician do the hari she just three or three, two or three views so sometimes is uh, the fellows are in trouble for reporting this is the in my observation so when senior in the cath lab the technician is not so hari because they are under control of the seniors but when the fellow are doing angiogram technician is doing sir is uh, sir hoye sir please finish sir next case go to no. next case is the problem sir no. you know cath lab sir because the signature has been done by you yes sir you cannot say it is done by my fellow it is you yes, who is yes. responsible for this city okay. and this city is a record it will run around in the country outside the country then that fellow who will review the city he will say oh no it was not done properly and you will be asked for why it was not by done uh, you yes. cannot say i have not done it my junior has done it you cannot ex this is not an excuse yes, yeah. sir doing the procedure no, sir. you must be verified by you john sir thank you bolbe john sir in in, uh, sir. in some countries there is a law that you cannot delete any scene from a angiogram cd Uh, yeah. i want your opinion regarding Absolutely. this one and another yeah. opinion i want that there is a complication in cag which is not preventable by any means this is the sudden blindness die induced what is about what's your experience regarding the, this the, issue commonly it is because of your ear embolism rarely it is because of cholesterol embolism commonly if a blackout type it is mostly to me i face these things while doing ptmc uh, two three times i have uh, come across to this sort of <coughs> blackout type mostly it is air embolism but uh, uh, 
the what was the other question mohsin uh, sir you cannot delete any scene from a angiogram oh, yes. cd in some countries there yes, is a law i think from the original original i think original, it is uh, yeah. you it is it is you your consciousness because if you show it to me or somebody else the how can he plan for the future yes i may not be the master of the master i may be uh, not the right person somebody else can do it but the what mistake i have done what procedure i have done if i don't show it with the record then the other operator will have the same problem so is my request whatever it is keep the raw data give the raw data to the to the patient let it be analyzed by and explain to the patient don't hide it explain to the patient problem is that it has been criticized by the other operator oh they have done this way there's not no, why it was done and if it happens something wrong the whole patient attendant will bang on the operator that's why is many of the junior operator who deleted the all these things but to me you should you should explain to the patient i have seen a lot of patient the right coronary was not properly done non selectively done and came to me then i explained that it is this is possible not always that everybody is expert for everything that can happen i may i may fail i will try hey yeah, i did it but i it is not the uh, the wrong way they have not done non selectively it is i cannot say anything you need another angiogram this and that so the, the reason why we are scared about my act is that it will be a, a blame game by the others but i think everybody has got his own conscious so it's better to be honest with his work thank you sir we have passed almost 2 hours time sir almost <laughs> sir. i uh, after finish after finish before conclusion i said the comments from the moonal sir uh, mm -hmm. last comment uh, regarding the reports everybody are lazy about the report everybody yeah. are doing the angiogram do the cath lab do the angiogram i sometimes say my driver can do the angiogram because he has the good reflex but reporting is the most important and preparation of the patients and prevent the complication most important so how about the how how the ideal report sir ideal report no, 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 i think it is different for the learner for the fellow it's a mandatory for the fellow to write the report one story i am telling you uh, while i was working in uh, scott heart institute i don't know their system so after angiogram everybody went uh, two days after there was a small sleep came to me i have not hang hoye geche doctor uh, sir sir uh, by the problem in the sir room uh, what do you sir please comment your fellow this is a uh, mandatory job okay because today you are here somebody is writing the report but when you will be posted in a place nobody is there who will write your report so everybody there should be say for example there are uh, every monthly it should be roster like this month the junior because in in government hospital there are a lot of staff is there uh, junior uh, 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 fellow is there there should be a point for this post somebody to check the uh, uh, reports somebody check the uh, uh, checklist so each individual should be assigned for the specific job otherwise he will say okay i am not done he will do it because he is also working with me she sabai to dud diye jabe ami to pani dei sherokom ekta obostha hobe actually in dhaka medical college in dhaka i have made the it's a uh, in that... private sector in private sector we have got a good support system because now uh, uh, 
almost all the specialists know how to write the report. So after they learn it, they need to countersign it. There is a one report, one is the countersign and final signature by the consultant. So countersign person should see the whole thing. Sir. These are the way you can make somebody accountable for the reporting. Thank you, sir. sir. Well, sir. In I make it a, 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 it's a rule. I tell my students, you see the angiogram, you make your own yes, report. Then I will correct it. I think and then I explain to him why most. he's right, why Still he's wrong. Still 100 people are watching. Uh, really, yes, sir. I'm sir, sir, uh, sir, sir, I'm a, a few comments, sir. Sir, uh, ideal report must be key to be, sir. Actor report must which thing must be in the ideal report, sir. If you comments, uh, Monizam, sir, and what is, sir? Can we stop it's it now? Which, sir? John, sir. John, sir. John, sir. Camera, who? I think uh, there's internet problems, sir. Net problems. Sir. Yes, sir. If Sir, Doctor Wadu, sir. Sir, must Actually, think uh, which must be must be uh, few few things must be in the report in the must be. Please like, uh, ensure the patient's proper name ID is there. It's a very important thing because a similar name patient the angiogram report can be a, a, go to the wrong person. I have that experience. And second, when they're reporting. May, uh, 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 tell the route which way you have gone. Third, please ensure that in your reporting, left pain, whether they are, if there is separate origin, mention it properly. In the LAT, if there is any lesion, mention where it is. Where it is a type A, type B, type C lesion, you can mention that, the percentage of stenosis. Also, the branches. If it is a medium-sized vessel or a large vessel, a diagonal or a worm, you should mention that. And uh, for the right coronary, you should mention it's a dominant or co-dominant, etc. And also, when you have a tortuous femoral vessel, if the entry is problematic, please mention that in the report. Because in future, even if you are also doing the procedure and intervention, these pointers will help you to uh, Ensure that you have a smooth procedure. Thank you, Monitor. sir. Dr. Shajan Kubi. Dr. Shajan Kubi. So, Shajan. Two other points I'd like to add. Dr. Shajan? Yes, sir. You hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. He's uh, from Malaysia. You. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I must do, uh, thank uh, Professor Mohan Jawan, sir, for his uh, splendid presentation. Sir, I want to add some comment here. What uh, my experience in Malaysia, I saw in IGN. IGN means uh, National Institute of Cardiovascular Disease Hospital in Malaysia. And here, uh, most of the cases done by the fellows, sir. And uh, though the, most of the cases done by the fellows, and uh, though the medical officers are not allowed, but Medical officers who are really sincere and very. Hey, I am Karoli Shundi Bachchan. Shabhi Beauty Hotel. I am. 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 I Please. Most of the cases done by the solo, I saw the Datu Rosli stand by there during his time. When there is problem, when there is critical lesion, fellow cannot wait. He intervened there. So uh, I have two requests here. That uh, well, number one is, uh, uh, and here in the meantime, when the fellows pass the exam, they are already expert in angiogram and uh, more expert in angioplasty. But in our situation, truly, I'm speaking that that uh, our we the cardiologists learn the angiogram angioplasty after passing the MD. So I I want to request that um, regular angiogram. Elective and the, the fellow should be get the privilege under the guidance of the uh, their teachers. Number one, and sir, I Dr. must Shajan, thank Dr. Shajan. Yes. Just scenario changed last uh, last uh, four to five years. Fellows are doing angiogram people passing. Okay, okay, you finish. And sir, uh, of course, yeah. I must say that after when I saw uh, most yeah, in, yeah, last uh, years back. in the cardio uh, cardiology society in a yeah. scientific, I found uh, involved the students fellows in different society. Sir, truly uh, uh, speaking here also in Japan, Korea and all through the society, there are many scope to have the uh, fellowship training. 
so uh, through the society if anybody uh, any students can contact the hit the society in the hospital even in india sir uh, if if you select only one institute per institute one student i assure you more than 20 students can be uh, can be uh, uh, given the opportunity to provide training there through the society so if cardiovascular society uh, come forward not only for india japan korea malaysia also singapore also through the society there is many strong chance just need just need a initiation and i i must say mohsin sir has done it lot but we can we can do it at bigger bigger scale we can do it in bigger scales yeah more communication sir regarding the report i want to add two points can i be allowed to talk faizuli the cardiac surgeon go ahead yes Fajuli. sir from the point of cardiac surgeon because nowadays we have got a temptation to do the total arterial revascularization so what we we do the dissection of the lima and rima both it's better to give a bit most in in high volume center we found that the in the cag is this uh, the lima and rima are not mostly they do the lima when there is triple vessel disease and amenable to surgery and not amenable to intervention but the most often we don't find the internal memory is not visualized other thing is that they, it must include the any peri procedural event no procedure is is, is even less even a minor air embolism should also be included because or in a event of resuscitation or whatever it must be included within the report so that the surgeon or the next the physician will get a overview about the patient that this patient was supposed to have another thing is that moment jama sir said then the whenever there is a compromised lv function and the the first thing is to do the right heart catheter to see the pulmonary pressure also to the to from the left side to the lv edp and not to land it land into trouble during the procedure with these things thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you sir bhai is back ji monish bhai your comment about the reporting is uh, was not uh, finished we did not hear it properly acha acha reporting some... reporting means that uh, the every report should be checked by some fellow is preferable it's a training it's a training for junior fellows to write the report and it should be check and counter sign before the consultant sign it so somebody should be accountable to review because the consultant is busy for many job but if you assign somebody the junior fellow who should go through even write the report and counter sign it so if anything wrong at least he should be asked for so when in our hospital i don't need to think about because uh the specialist who are with us they they have got a job to write the report see the report after typing and sign it so if there is anything wrong somewhere he will be asked for this mistake yes there is a human error is there but he cannot ignore this responsibilities uh, that is uh, why uh, it is important moreover if the junior don't know how to write a report yeah when he will be a consultant and who will help him and if the report is been done by somebody who is is not correct if he don't know it how will he will correct it so this is something a training of the junior to write the report yes the at in time the a technician become expert the medical secretary become expert to write it down but it should be checked by the specialist checked by the fellows pardon sir uh sir conclude yeah <laughs> <laughs> actually it has been a really a pleasurable session for all of us uh even uh, quite we are quite senior still we have learned many things from you uh, thank you sir i think the students uh, have learned many thing because it was a very uh, with example you have manifested what you were actually saying what you mean by what and that's why i think it will be very helpful for them and 
we'll be having more talks on these type of topics, like writing a proper report for angiogram or angioplasty, or how to prepare a patient for angioplasty, not doing it properly, how to do it properly, how to do the different bifurcation stenting, how to do the left main stenting. We will have that interventional talk later on. Our main uh, thing is that we want to go step by step. I think uh, so you can make one more young... lecture on complication of, simply complication yeah. of angiogram. Yeah. Simple thing. Uh, uh, it's it's a very important very thing. Good proposal, sir. Very and good how proposal. to avoid them. How to avoid no, them. It will come automatically. If you yeah. talk about the complication, it will come automatically. We, we will take this suggestion uh, uh, actually, and we will try to do that. That is that. And I have to thank Incepta. They have been helping us throughout this uh, more than a month, one and a half month actually. And th with the tremendous help and uh, with the participation with a very active audience, we and the very deliberate, active, dedicated participation of our uh, specialists and teachers, like Professor Mamlu Jaman and those who have already given us lectures. We ha are having a quite a good time, even in this corona syndrome, which is a very depressing time. This is really something that really warms the heart. We actually look forward to this period of time when we can actually go away 